I'm here today at the Ontario Science Centre with... Walter Stoddard. Amazing. And today we're going to be talking about flight. So I have a few questions for you today. Uh, one of which is, um, if weight is a factor in flight, how do commercial jets fly? Aren't they too heavy? That's a great question. Well, the whole thing about flight was learning how to get objects that are heavier than air to, to lift off. And it comes from understanding how lift actually works. So with the wings of the plane, we've increased the size of the wings and the speed of the air moving across them. You can increase the lift, and all you have to do is balance that for the weight that you're trying to, you're trying to lift. So the larger planes, you look at a larger plane, you see a larger wing. Uh, a, a smaller plane doesn't need a wing as big. Oh, cool. So does that kind of work the same way for birds as well? Exactly. Oh. Exactly. In fact, we have an exhibit here at the Ontario Science Centre that looks at what would happen if a bird weighed as much as you or I. Does thrust refer to planes with engines, or does it also refer to gliders as well? Thrust, in terms of a glider, you have an initial thrust, so the, the speed at which it's launched, but then after that, there's, there's no more thrust. And so its lift, its motion is, is all determined, its lift is by its forward motion, but it's using gravity. So as it descends, that's translated into forward direction, which keeps it in its, keeps its speed. It's also, you'll see gliders using thermals, using air currents that are naturally occurring. And so as that hot air rises, it lifts the glider so they can have a longer flight time. Since we're talking a bit about birds too, you'll see birds that uh, glide as well. Mm -hmm. Some of the really larger birds, because it takes a lot of effort to, to flap their wings and to maintain a propelled flight, what they'll do is they'll glide, they'll soar. And they'll do that very thing. You'll see circling eagles or, or, or hawks, and they're, they're using thermals to stay up. They're, they're circling within the rising currents of heat. When you're dealing with uh, long-distance flyers, like, uh, like ducks or, or geese, they will glide, and, and they also spot each other off. When they fly in formation, they reduce the, the drag that the others are experiencing. So by flying in, in, a, in a V, you have the benefit of the air coming off of the wings of the bird in front, that give an extra boost to the bird behind, and so they can spot each other off. So what's required for lift to be achieved? Ah, okay, now we're at the heart of the matter, right? <laughs> so lift as we do it with, our, with aircraft, and, and birds with their wings as well, you have air moving across the surface of the wing. It moves above and below the wing, okay. and it's about creating a, a pressure differential. And so air pressure is very powerful. And if we can use it to our advantage, then we have that power, we have that force working for us. And that's what the wing does. It's based on its angle of attack, so the, the position it faces in the wind. And based on its shape, it creates a, a lower pressure above than below. And the higher pressure below then helps lift the wing up. Faster moving air, in general, higher lift, so long as your, your wing profile is right. Yeah, there, is a, there are limits, and, and there's limits to angle of attack, there's limits to how fast you can go based on the shape of your wing. What happens is the air, we need that air to move over the surface of the wing. And you want to make sure you're flying at the right speed for your wing shape. Oh, interesting. Yeah. If it takes weight, lift, thrust, and drag for planes to fly, how is it that hummingbirds and uh, bumblebees are able to hover? Yes, yeah, so hovering, a uh, great topic. Really, the helicopter is a great analogy because the helicopter blades are involved in both lift and thrust. They're, okay. Yeah, and so they, they, they'll lift the plane as well as, as, well as control its, its forward motion, and that's what you're seeing on the surface of a, of a bird's wing. And so because they have that kind of maneuverability and control in the same surface, they can change its angle and change the direction in which that thrust is going. Uh, we, we have examples of planes that are, are vertical takeoff in which the, the thrust changes its direction and up it goes. And it's the same kind of idea with a bird that, that is hovering. It's using its wings for a downward thrust in order to, to stay aloft. It's all about that, that wing shape and the ability to maneuver and change the direction in which that force is being applied. Yeah, there's cool. great parallels between uh, what's happening in nature and what, what we've managed to figure out and do ourselves. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Cranium Cookie, and a very special thank you to Walter for taking us into the world of flight. I'm your host, Danielle Thorne, and until next time, remember to keep your brain fed with noms for your noggin.
If you like what we do here on Cranium Cookie and would like to help support the show, check the links in the description below to find a link to our PayPal account. 